today in a topic that all of you will like five steps how to create a perfect tv interview and for that we have more than a celebrity a high expert in the topic someone that has done over 3000 tv shows and more than 30000 interviews minimum so welcome to the stage and can be can you please see and introduce yourself Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> uh, my name is Ian Pelham, and I describe myself um, as a broadcaster and commenter. And so I've been a, a journalist for uh, 55 years now, and I moved from print journalism over to television about 12 years ago. And I've worked with all the major television channels in the world. And I believe that you met during your journey fantastic people so who do you think that would be the person that if that that interview that you will never forget and you mentioned I, i'm sure you have plenty I, of I, I i have so many experiences of uh, people and, and, and even today <laughs> it's a great honor to be <laughs> thank on your you, show thank you it's a great pleasure so, so, honor so, is ours so uh, you know for me when i'm uh doing interviews i, I do with all sorts people so i i do them with presidents um i, I do them with kings and queens um but everybody to me king or queen is a person citizen of real fantastic so here we go and now little by little we're going to discover the secret of a one person that is so fantastic have been in the TV in so many different uh, shows and today if you ever wonder if somebody invites you uh, and you're gonna have to be interviewed and you're a center broadcaster and you want to get more your audience engaged and you want to learn how you can prepare for these uh, interviews today Ian is gonna share with us the five step how to create the perfect TV interview. Before uh, of that, Ian, you have worked in in different TV channel. I am yes. aware that at the moment one of the uh, broadcasting that you're doing they have the reach of how much? One billion audience. Oh my God! So one billion audience. So and of of course also with another project with Sky TV in the in the past and. My question to you is how, before we discuss the five steps, how to create the perfect TV interview, how, when you want to create a new show, a new TV show, we were sharing that everybody's calling him, Ian, can you do this show for me? Can you do this show? He was sharing with us that he doesn't know how come all these calls come to him. So definitely it's because you have to approach the process, definitely because you know your industry very good, definitely because you know how to. Uh, put a, a compelling title to that show that we reach and, and create the, the, the engagement to the audience. So, what is your secret when somebody comes and said, "Ian, I, I would like to do this show"? Yes. Uh, what is what? How is the process? How you come up? You come up with ideas okay. with the title. I, I, I think first of all, um, I have a focus. So my, my so my my focus. Uh, Currently, is to promote unity, mm -hmm. promote young people, what they are doing, uh, especially in Britain, to promote, promote tourism and to promote. So that that's my four criteria. So if if a new idea comes to me and falls within that remit, then I, I start to list that, that 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 that's my first focus. But then I look at is that person genuinely wanting to do this program or are they just trying to become a how can you assess that i, I know that through 55 years of experience <laughs> you know uh, uh, over, uh, over what happens when it happens um and uh, you know so i i know these so the whole point is it's a big difference with someone that wants to become a tv star completely different someone that really want to make a big difference yes. for the audience i mean uh, it's, it's, it's two different things, right? Absolutely. Are you doing it for you, or are you doing it for actually create a big difference in your audience? Ah, that's brilliant. Absolutely. 
So, so basically, all the television work that I want to bring, and in any strata, is to bring value to people. And benefit to them. So bring, bring value, uh, first of all. Um, look at uh, your subject. Um, I, I have a business mantra. Mm -hmm. My business mantra is that every good business wants to help. So if you have uh, you know problems with community, for example, uh, if you, if like in Britain, a lot of businesses are on their knees right now. How are they going to promote themselves? Again? Uh, if you look at tourism uh, in Britain, which is one of my staple areas where I work with, uh, it's on its knees as well. And I fear for young people. I fear for young people today because young people today, I think a lot of the time, don't are not identical. They feel they're invisible. Mm -hmm. And so they will turn to areas where they think they can just quick start rather than bring value to their lives. And, and I, I, I came from a working class background where everything that I had to do, uh, I had to to, in reality, to allow um, myself to grow, and on average, you know, when, when I first got married and, and moved to London, I was working eighteen hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I was doing three different jobs. I, I, you know, I was looking <laughs> at your book and resonating with. Yeah, with, thank with, you. With, 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 How with, many hours I was working yeah, when I arrived yeah, here, right? And I get it. Yeah. Because what you have is bravery. Thank you. Uh, and courage to be able to do something with your life that you know you're, you're capable of. Mm -hmm. and once you have that belief, mm -hmm. then everything else is just a, a matter of taking the risk. I agree 100% with you. Yeah, and I'm also concerned uh, regarding this young generation because of technology that used to just to press a button and the problem gets and they take the phone and they press a button and uh, the, yeah. and the problem is solved and somehow i think that that is a it's a mistake in values because if you want to achieve something in life there is a, something like like yeah. your belief there is some work to put into it yeah. there is um technology is one thing and i think what happened with the young generation is that in their unconscious mind, it is it's, it's getting embedded that problems have to be solved quicker. And then when they go to business, they can, they they no, they don't want to open restaurants anymore. They don't want they all all want to do create an app and and make it the application to worth one billion. And the truth is that ninety nine percent of all this project it never make it. And uh, not, the, the young generation is not happy even to be the business and to make a different income for the family and friends. They they want to make a billion and and uh, again looking the more than what they actually need in terms of. So there is a lot of work, and I'm very proud of you. That one of your purposes and uh, through your channels of distribution, you're working with the the young generation to yeah. to bring them well, something very important concept that you said. Focus and clarity, right? But it's important as well for young people to realize if they work hard, if they're focused, if they create value for people, um, value will return to them. And so uh, I, I look at the ethics mm -hmm. uh, of anybody coming to the world and saying, you know. Um, you know, I, I mean, the, the biggest uh, yearly uh, graduate um, across the country in university is media. They all want to become superstars. <laughs> there you go. They all want to become I agree superstars. 100%. You know? um, and, um, but then, you know, sometimes the, the knowledge that they gain doesn't really give them um, the means of actually being true to themselves, but also being fair. So I see a lot in television today um, where uh, even major television channels will, will be uh, ruled by young researchers. Um, and young researchers, a lot of the time, 
they will be asked to research something. And all they'll do is just come to YouTube. <laughs> they'll, they'll go to YouTube, find out what the answer is, and that's the answer they want. But that's not really doing the job. So, so I think you know, um, by bringing value to the world, but by bringing value to themselves, making themselves feel good because they're doing something that has purpose, that is the type of person that I want. Excellent. And then uh, to reveal now the processing, if you are in your house, and you want to become a broadcaster, you want to become a, a, and to have your own show, it started from the point that Ian just faced, right? The started from the big umbrella is that the main objective for you as a broadcaster is never about you, it's about what can you do to people, what can, what value can you add to people. And on that basis, what would be the five steps to create that perfect being to you? So, so, so first of all, if, if you're going to another TV channel for okay. um, an interview, the first thing to do is actually establish what does that channel mm. uh, and And if it's possible to, to actually even get um, an idea of the question. That's the ideal one. Um, the second I would say is always expect quality because the, very num good. The, the number of major TV channels I used to work with, and they would invite me in to talk about something simple to some or family. But what they really wanted to do was give me the expert question of why has somebody done something bad within the royal family within their eyes? Explain to the world why this is. There's no uh, reference to this beforehand. So the, the, the reality next So how is, you deal with that? How well, you deal? Uh, okay, let's say, so for all of you bring to context, this is what I get. They said that they say, okay, Ian, we're going to invite you to a TV show. It's going to be yeah. about, uh, about the royal family. And then inside okay. that TV interview, that, a question comes that you were not uh, expecting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let, 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 let me give you a classic case. So, so, <laughs> Uh, I was asked in one day by uh, one of the my channels uh, in Britain. It mm -hmm. had twenty million audience wow. to it, uh, and they came in and said, uh, uh, "We want you to talk about a certain uh, royal subject." Uh -huh. say, oh, okay, no problem at all. Uh, uh -huh. And I'm sat in the studio, and uh, they turned around to me and they said, "Why didn't Prince, Prince William?" go to the memorial service for war dead, which is one wow. of the most special days in London. Oh. Uh, and uh, but, uh, he went to skiing instead. And, and, and I could see... It's a very, uh, very difficult question, right? So, so I could see that, you know, it, in other words, uh, the interviewer was scenting blood. <laughs> they, were, they were scenting blood and, and uh, they, you know, and so I said, well, I, I know exactly and first of all, there's this, wow. uh, there's this, there's this reaction of, yeah. what, what do you mean? Wow. Well, there, there can't be a reason for doing it. <laughs> and I said, there's a... He's surprised. He said, um, I prepared this to, to, to surprise you, to shock you, and then how you react to the question. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the answer to the question was, was that the reason why Prince William was skiing, that he was helping a friend who was going through a very bad time. Wow. And uh, the, the friends of which he was helping both went to Eton along with his, uh, with Harry, his brother, and William. And tragically, the brother of the person that he was now helping was killed. Ooh. And they set up a charity, William and Harry set up a charity, fundraise for the values of the dead brother. Mm -hmm. And in uh, three years ago, um, William went to the wedding of this young man. Uh, and unfortunately, the marriage has now broken down, and this young man was inconsolable. So William had taken this young man skiing mm -hmm. in order to help him get through the period of not only still remembering his brother, mm -hmm. but also uh, getting over the the, the problems. Now, 
started talking about this, and, and you could see that the, the, the faces <laughs> drop. Yeah. <laughs> they were spent in a big debate, right? They were in a big debate, and you could see the faces drop you know, with the TV interviewer because I suddenly thought, well, what can I say to this? That's the perfect explanation of what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, and here so, goes so that question. You have to yeah. know yourself. So, what do you think that, um, like you said, that the interview was looking for blood? Oh, like yeah. you said, as yeah. a metaphor, yeah. do you think that this is because they have an impact? This, do you think that this is the only way to keep the audience engaged? Do you think that um, seeking for blood, like you say, uh, is been is, is, a, is a general practice because create engagement, people stay more? Yeah. Or do you think that there is a, another way that we can do that where the interview can uh, can have engagement, but rather sure. than seeking blood? Blood sure. or go from the negative sure. point of view, turn it into positive. What is sure. your view on that? Sure. So, so in, in reality, um, ever since rolling 24 hour news started, mm -hmm. the most mundane subjects that are happening at two or three o'clock in the morning they have to set up in, in order, <laughs> in, in order to make anybody who's watching the, the show <laughs> at that time in the morning somewhere in the world of, of interest. So, mm -hmm. so, in, uh, in, so try to create this um, system nowadays where they can ask uh, people like myself very awkward questions mm -hmm. uh, and, and they expect that you know I might sweat or, or do or, you know or show some sign of, of stammering or yeah. uh, indecision in the answer and so the, the reality with people like myself are that obviously I, I keep up to date with most of the affairs um, because I, you know, I, I work um, I'm a commentator for the family. Um, I also my one billion show is a Christian show, so I talk about politics and society. Um, and so, you know, in, in that way, you have to know your So it, you know, and it is it's daunting. The the, the uh, I mean, um, I've a lot. A lot plays a great part in this uh, because, um, uh, but when I first started, my, my first major assignment was to be an anchor for CNN, mm -hmm. you know, one of the biggest uh, channels in the world, with sort of 300 million audience mm -hmm. across the world. And uh, on this particular night, this was uh, the night before William and Kate were going to get married, mm -hmm. uh, and I was asked on to become the anchor for a CNN show. Wow. Now, the way that CNN works is that um, you, you speak in London and the uh, the um, uh, signal is sent to America with a five-second delay. Oh. In case anybody swears or does anything, <laughs> they, 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 they got five seconds to bleep it out. You know, okay. so, so, so they, they're, they're done. Anyway, so um, they're doing the countdown, 15, 14, 30. You hear this in the earpiece, and, and the sound guy... Uh, in, in America, saying can't hear you speak. Uh, can't hear you speak up. I mean, we're gonna have to. So for one hour, <laughs> for one hour, we, we are shouting Whoa. at the top of our voices. Wow. Um, uh, you know, and, and afterwards, the the lady presenter said, "You're quite good at this. You know, she said, she said, you perhaps ought to do a bit more." <laughs> M NBC picked it up, CNN, uh, and before I knew it, you know, I started working with the American channels, the Australians. You name it. Now I work with all the major channels across the country. Part of it is luck, but the biggest part, it, it, you know, I'm not clever. So I explain to people, I'm not a clever person. I'm not an intelligent person. I just, I just, have, I just have common sense. But what I am, and I think uh, the reality is, is that anyone who wants to set up a TV channel or wants to comment within a Know your subject. Be passionate. What create value not for yourself, but for the people who are listening to you, and you will resonate. And this, okay. So can we agree that the third step is of out of the five step how to create the perfect TV interview is be professional. And with with that statement, be professional. Can you please extend it a little bit more? 
what do you mean by that? Be professional mean the way you dress, the way you perform, the way yes. you prepare for your interview. It, what what that even means? Be professional. Be, be professional is um, always arrive ahead of time. Very good. Uh, first of all, uh, always. Uh, uh, I, I dress differently now, but when, 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 <laughs> I when, agree with the dress. Yeah. yeah. When, 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 I, when I first uh, started uh, working. Uh -huh. uh, my my, my uh, CNN show, I wore this three piece black suit, mm -hmm. a yellow tie, and a yellow pants. Wow. And, that, and that almost became like my signature dress. Right. So, yeah. so, so for about two years, that's what I wore. You know, <laughs> on, on every show, I was, and then one day I, I, I got bored with this. <laughs> I got bored with this. And, 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 um, and I went on a, uh, I think it was a Sky show, and I changed my dress. And they looked and they said, What have you done? <laughs> You've changed how you look. <laughs> you know, television doesn't like the change of dress. They like, yeah, to, yeah, like, yeah. They like to feel to be predictable. Yeah. Feel stupid. So, so professionalism is know your subject. Um, simple little things. As I was saying to Lily just before we we came on the show here, um, things like don't eat toast. I'm a great lover of toast. I love toast, but. When I've had toast and then I've done a TV interview article, sometimes a little crumb of toast can actually catch the back of your throat. Oh my God. And you start coughing. <laughs> you know, you don't want things like that. <laughs> so, so, so it's, all, it's all about um, know your subject, value your audience, um, and know everything about the subject that even circles around it. Because if you're going on a TV channel, um, look at what the TV channel. Look at the style of. I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example of that. But, um, uh, when Prince Philip, I, I worked with all the major television networks right across the world. Uh, and uh, he died at ten. What well, it was first known that uh, he had died at ten twelve midday oh. on the flight. And ten past twelve. I'm working with ABC Australia. Wow. Um, which is the which is the major television company, BBC, uh -huh. in Australia. Now that's a very austere, very straightforward. Um, they wanted me to do something a little bit free, um, and, and that's a very straightforward. Thing. So uh, by the Monday, um, by that stage, I'd already done ten, twelve. Wow. Um, and I and uh, I got a call from one of my favourite. Fun channels that I love working with, which is Channel Seven Australia, mm -hmm. um, and it's like, uh, and it's a fun. So anyway, so uh, this is so for me. I'm having to do my bit two o'clock in the morning for it because it, it's yeah <laughs> eight o'clock in, oh, uh... in Sydney. So anyway, so uh, uh, so they said to me, right, okay, what what we want you to do is um, uh, there'll be a, a ninety second trailer. Will come on. And they'll ask you what are your Philip. So so I'm I'm watching the show and the whole show up to that period is levity. You know, it's funny, they're doing positive things, even the weatherman makes a mistake and everybody's laughing. <laughs> you know? And so you know, and I think, well, I don't want to break the levity exactly at the same time. The pace. So so then uh, they they put on this 90 second trailer and I'm thinking, okay, well it's probably Prince Philip. It was a 90 second trailer on me. I'm, wow. watching, I'm, I'm, I'm watching this and I think, what on earth are they doing? Why have they done a 90 second trailer on me? Anyway, so anyway, so, wow. the, so the trailer finishes and there's the two presenters. Uh, and they said, Ian Pelham Turner, well, uh, good morning. Um, and I said, uh, what's, what's your memories? I said, um, I said, every time I used to work with Prince Philip, I used to take out a life insurance policy before. <laughs> and, and there was like a, That's a very good joke. Yeah. There was like about a three second delay. And they all burst out laughing. <laughs> and, 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 That's and, a good and, way to do because it. Because yeah. it, 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 you know, to them, they thought, "What?" <laughs> and then I explained why all this happened. And it, and so each channel, the point I was trying to make, each channel has its own method of delivery. Exactly. I agree on the. So some are very serious, and then you have to do a very straightforward thing. Exactly. But when you're faced with other channels, you may want a slightly more uplifting. Uh, something funny, something that makes them, I mean, for broadcasters to burst out laughing, very unusual. <laughs> and they just weren't expecting that yeah. 
come out straight away. So, so that, that, that's how you create um, profession. I agree hundred percent. So it's a it's a word that we say very simple, but it, it has some a lot of connotation behind yeah, how, how you how you how you behave and as a professional, how you follow the theme and the outcome that actually this channel is producing to the audience. Because at the end of the day, something that we're learning today is never about you. It's about how much value can you add to the audience. And if the audience is there and they're having a great time, they're That's laughing, awesome. right? And uh, as a journalist, you get invited to give you something. As a professional that you are, you already know what the channel is about. You already see the face. And and, and like you said, I, I, I'm hundred percent I disagree that you're not clever. I think that you're brilliant. <laughs> but I think that behind this brilliance is what you what you were sharing with us. Have this common sense yeah. to actually produce the right answer at the right yeah. time for the right TV yeah. channel that will actually uh, produce the value and the result that the Thank audience you. is expecting to get. So now we have three of the five steps how to yeah. create the perfect TV interview with one of the greatest interviewers and hosts broadcaster in this planet and what else what what could okay. be so, so, the fourth step of... so, 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 so the next step is um think through potentially some of the memorable things that will resonate with you so as i say um Memorable as, 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 as you will find out, I have a story for every occasion. You can <laughs> name me a subject, and I have a story related <laughs> yeah. to it in some way. So, um, memorable lines, sound bites. Which is the profession that I come from. What that what that mean? A sound bite is an, is a, a verbal message that resonates and, and changes people. Can you give us an example? So, so the example is that um, <laughs> um, uh, when Prince George got um, I was working with NBC, which is bigger than this, uh, and they said, uh, we want you to come on, we want you to talk about the, the first image, which is the most important image, of Prince George with Kate uh, and William. Um, wow. Okay. Um, anyway, so, so these images finally came into the section. Um, and uh, NBC have screened that about or, or about twenty meters. They're a massive. huge, they're, they're huge. Wow. All, all of a sudden, these images came up, and we recoil back in horror. Uh, Why? At, at how bad these images were. <laughs> but they were very pixelated, uh, 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 or no, oh. they have been taken. They've uh -huh. been taken by Kate's father on his iPhone. Uh, oh, this this was the allegation. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at all of this. It's blurred. Uh, there's no clarity. Um, that they got Lupo the dog at that time. Uh -huh. and Lupo looked like he was just about to be sick. The the uh, George is is you can, can just uh, you know he's looking down. Um, you know William looks like he's 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 in a different planet. You know, <laughs> and, so, and this is supposed to be the official photo. <laughs> So, so uh, I think they got excited and then just take it. So, right? so, so, so they, so they all get excited. <laughs> the Americans get excited because they, they, they have it. Uh, Everybody's excited. They, they used to do because they said, "Okay, Mister Clark, ask what are you going to say about this thing." <laughs> <laughs> and, you know? and so, so then you know, I'm, I'm wriggling through. I'm thinking, "What on earth can I say about <laughs> some, I say about something?" Because just, just to explain, because as a, as a commission law photographer at one time, what I was, I did. Um, William's first baby got um, wow. So anyway, so 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 I'm, I'm sort of wriggling out of that, and then uh, this is um, by this time it's uh, six o'clock at night. I get a call from the BBC. I'm working now with the BBC all the way through mm -hmm. two o'clock in the morning. Uh, I'm tired, this is the oh. but I, I'm getting messages all night long from people who are involved. In the royal family saying. Please, please, please find anything <laughs> that, that, can, that can change. That can change this stuff because the whole world is coming in and saying, "Why on earth have you allowed this to happen?" What these are the worst raw photographs 
if anybody's ever seen them in, in their in the entire history. life. <laughs> so, so the whole world is coming in on Buckingham Palace, and, and they're in what we call bunker mode, wow. you know, because of it. I get all these questions. Please, 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 change it. Please, 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 change it. Yeah, so mm. uh, I, I get two hours to sleep. It's a big I, responsibility, right? I, I get yeah. so I, I get two hours to sleep. I, I'm then back on set for breakfast. And they're saying the same thing. They're saying the same thing that they said to me all night. Long. They're saying, for goodness sake, you can't compliment these photographs in any way, shape, or form. You know, they're out of focus. You know, they're backlit. They were know. looking for blood again. They're, yeah. they're, they're looking for blood. <laughs> and, 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 but what, what's resonating in my head is, for God's sake, find something, <laughs> anything that's going to change. To balance the scale. Yeah. The whole empire. So this is where positive sound bites come into it. So um, I so. They said, Ian Philip Turner, well, commentator, you also did uh, Jim Williams' first photograph. What on earth do you think about these terrible photographs you know, that have been put out? You know, these were the official photographs. How dare the royal family almost be doing this? And I said, Well, I understand this technical difficulty. You talk about an understatement, mm -hmm. this technical difficulty. I said, um, uh, Only a father could take the look of love. And even the camera crew, who are the most hardened people you could meet, you know, <laughs> who've heard everything in their time, the two commentators were mortified mm -hmm. because all of a sudden I've changed the agenda. Then I know. Um, yeah. And within seconds, that message, only a father could take a look at love and take love, went right across the red line. You know? uh, and after that, you know, through more television interviews that day, purely on, on that line, right? On that line. And it changed the whole perception of it. And so they didn't look at the technical quality anymore. They just looked at tape size and they thought, okay, we get it. And that's how you create sound bites that have actually changed major issues of what happened. And major issues That's a brilliant example. And like, like uh, Ian is sharing with us, is how you can create that engagement, how you can you can uh, make a line that can travel the world and can become viral, but also it has a positive statement. Yeah. That I think that in the media there is too much negativity. People love negativity. People engage a lot with negativity. So we need more people like you in the media that can change the, the perspective of the topic that we are talking about and actually something positive across the, the yeah. line. Why do you think, Ian, that uh, in the media, they love negativity and or set some part of the media? Is, is the media who love negativity or is the audience who love negativity and they're engaged and that's what the media produces type of content? Or what is your view on that? Yeah, I, I don't think the audience likes negativity because um, if you look at uh, newspapers, uh -huh. well, I, I, I worked in newspapers really for like 40 years. Wow. And I worked at, at a national newspaper. And newspapers declined when they started putting a lot more negative stories. Because, oh, wow. because you know, my, my thought process was nobody wants to have a newspaper at their breakfast table and read something that pulls their mood down for the rest of the day. Exactly. You know, it, it, Doesn't it, make it, sense. It's common sense. You know? <laughs> it, it doesn't need intelligence. It's just <laughs> pure common sense. So, so the, the newspapers when I first worked for them, the national newspapers, these have a five or six million uh, readership each newspaper in Britain. By the time uh, I ended and moved into television, uh, newspapers were down to five or six million. Wow. Yeah. So they, they lost four and a half million of their readers. Wow. You know? So, so it, 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 it was Britain uh, voting with their feet. And they didn't want to be true. And I and I think you know that the negativity nowadays um, is the cheap finish. Uh, and uh, the you know for me, I don't believe in negativity. I know how to counteract, it, mm -hmm. but I don't physically uh, want to work with. And so you know when when I'm faced with that, and if I'm being asked to. Uh, create an opinion. I mean, for example, um, uh, I, I, I worked for the BBC uh, on Harry and Meghan's wedding. Uh, 
Uh, and on the Friday, I was working with three other people. They were nice people, and afterwards, they said, oh, well done. Um, and uh, I was on a very big show um, that was discussing, um, you know, is Megan going to get value? Is going to bring value to the show? Um, and you know, what do you think about the whole way of doing it and everything? And, and everyone else was. Oh, you know, it's okay. And you know, and they kind of think, oh, well, I'm not happy with this. This is going to be a complete and utter disaster. Mm -hmm. You know, I said this is the biggest travesty I've seen in ages. Uh, and uh, I then said, but in reality, um, nowadays, uh, what should have happened is that Megan's mother could have been brought a few weeks ago social. So that they are corralled within the royal family, and then everything. The other thing that I said is, I hate racism. Mm -hmm. I, I fight racism every wow. single day. I applaud you. And the reality was was that every time someone was um, taking a piece of information, they were just they, they were um, you know uh, she was referring to the mix. Mm -hmm. I said, well, why wasn't it called the white girl? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why wasn't it called the white girl? All the way through that thing, because it was, they want to, easy comes across as well, want to describe people and they want to have a character. Why mm -hmm. was she called mixed race? Yeah, mm -hmm. the great was white girl. Exactly. Yeah, they would never even dare. <laughs> to say that. So, so I, I, I think in, in some ways um, you can chain. People's philosophy right. at times. Sometimes you have to be. I I believe in being quite cautious. Yes, I have an opinion. Whether my opinion is within the value of that, that is a different. But that, that you know, I, I feel that on occasions like that, I cannot allow cynicism you know, and bad journalism to corrupt the industry. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, that's a very, very, very good view. And then here to the audience, we are broadcasting five steps to create the perfect TV interview. And so far, we have four steps. Step number one is to... Um, what, what is the step number one? It, it, I mean, step number one is, is know the, the, the audience. The audience, the, exactly. The, the audience in the first place. Know the channel, know it. Know the audience. The second step is um prepare the questions prepare the questions the studies yeah, yeah. and prepare the question step yeah. number three is to be professional Absolutely. and all we mean by that step yeah. number four that, uh, that we just shared right now is how to create this positive Absolutely. line that can Absolutely. can travel all over the world Absolutely. very very important and the last thing mm -hmm. is to thank everyone who has asked you ah yeah. that's very important so you would thank them as well. And then you would send them an email after saying, Thank you so much. Really enjoyed this program uh, that I've appeared on. I am available for other programs if you wish to have me on. And this is my core special subject that I can talk about. And, and once you start to engage with this, um, they will put you onto their speaker. So that oh, wow. that, and, and in that way, you can start encouraging more kind of interest. So this is very, very important. So remember, the is after you finish the interview in the in the show. If you connect with the with the channel, you will more more likely to be uh, all again, to maybe for the same topic or maybe for different topic, because the channel. It, Will uh will put you in the database as the as the, the speaker profile. So how many? So which type is your favorite show? Do you like uh TV interview to one person? Do you like interview multiple people at the same time? What 
Do you prefer politics more than royal family, more uh, than uh, uh, nation? What if your favorite, if you have one, or, or what? I, I, I mean, I answer that question by saying I love people. <laughs> That's a great answer. I love so, so they could, you know, I, I love that interview. Families, presidents, uh, I've interviewed very famous people. Uh, but for me, everybody is a first class citizen. Everybody deserves um, any skills that I have um, to allow them to access. That, that's what it's all about. And really, a lot of the time, I don't really do interviews. Uh, I don't believe in it. I believe, like we're having now, we're having a conversation. conversation. Yeah. Because with a conversation, different things can come up. And, you know, I've had times when people have said to me, well, you know, unless you give us a question, you know, we're going to come on the show. And I said, no, I don't need to. So, like, you know, mm -hmm. go, go, go and find someone else, you know, to work with, because I'm not going to work with you. You know, uh, and so it, it's um, a conversation. But it, in reality, what do I hope will happen? I hope everybody will enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Everybody will find it. And everybody will walk away and think um, that they have done something and accomplished something. That's brilliant. And now, you know, we have a, one more question, and it's regarding we had the pleasure uh, to have you speaking on our stage a few days ago, and, and you spoke very confident very powerful in front of the audience and as we all can see you're also very confident in front of the camera have you ever experienced a stage fright here of speaking in front of the camera or there is a type of magic that you were born that um, that you meant to, to to be that you that you feel that you have a message and it won't be any obstacle to go in the way or do you experience on your first interview this fear that oh my god, uh, a lot of people look at me? How uh, this stage fright we are born into? We all have. I, I, I get stage fright. I get everything. I'm a very shy person. Really? <laughs> wow. I, I, that, that's how I describe myself. You know, so, so um, do I get stage fright and things like that? No. Um, I know mm -hmm. my subject. I know uh, what, what, what I'm going to. Um, uh, and, and I, I think sometimes I'm too late. You know, I'm almost comatose. You know, totally the opposite. Yeah. You know, I, you know, because uh, with my political, so I mean, I get really awkward questions asked. You know, wow. This is going out to a one billion audience, uh, and I'm so comatose that I, I can just still answer it. I'm so laid back. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I don't think. Uh, I, I've done, I mean, I've done over 3,000 shows. Wow. Um, you That's know, a so, lot so, of shows so, on so, TV. Yeah? <laughs> so television doesn't bother me. It does bother me. I'm, I'm, I'm part <laughs> and parcel of what I try to do nowadays is that, I, I mean, I, I've known occasionally when I had to write and say, um, I had uh, on one of the um, shows that I did, going out to a billion audience, I brought a guest in. Oh. Into the studio, as well. and uh, he was an expert on business and acting. I mean, he really knew his subject. Quite confident with him, uh, and he sat there and he had three full stack sheets of paper with all the answers, you know, for any question he might get. So anyway, so um, and I said he came prepared for the so interview. I, so I said, "You're feeling fine. You're feeling fine." I said, "This is all the cameras. Here's the presenter, the other presenter, Wilma Marco from." Of our television, uh, you know, I, uh, and then uh, Wilma goes in, uh, in show goes live, does her introduction, turns to the gentleman, and says, Ask me a question. He freezes. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? He freezes. I have to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> So literally, he freezes, uh, and, I, and I reckon in, in seconds, I can see the look on his face, and it was, <laughs> was like sheer terror. You know? um, and it took about five minutes of, of, of uh, you know, I actually set the question, so I knew the answer to the question. Anyway, so, so I, 
I was testing the questions and answering the questions and trying to make it fun. And he was nodding his head. And, I was, uh, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he, he, I, I think he sort of came out of this. Uh, the chuck, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, the, this fear. And, and then, you know, started. Well. So, 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 so these things happen. I mean, I mean I, I've been on uh, shows. I, I knew some guys. And could I remember the name of Kate? Wow. <laughs> not, only could, not only could I not remember Kate's name, oh. neither could the other two presenters either. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm all going around and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is, this, this, this is, this is Sky News. We're, uh. we're talking to 20 million people and we can't remember Kate. So it's just, it's just one of those things. You, you, you can suddenly, at times... So how do you deal with this? Well, you I, smile? Well, 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 you, 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 no, you, you, have a, you have an earpiece and, 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 and a production manager in the... In the uh, Balcony shouted the name. <laughs> it's Kate, you fool. <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, that's that's right. <laughs> but you know, so, so, sometimes the, 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 these things can happen because you know the the, the um, it's like anything else. You know, we're, I'm not we're infallible. humans, right? I'm not infallible. You know, and, and, and so um, uh, at times, um, you know, I, I will be uh, asked questions and. Uh, you know, what on earth are they talking about? It's got nothing <laughs> related to the stuff that we're, we're talking about. And, uh, and I'm thinking, where's this conversation going as well? Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 I love doing live television because um, uh, it's, spontaneous. it's spontaneous. But what, what it does do as well, it's brain tapping. So that when I come out of a live broadcast, a lot of the time, I have to almost have period of maybe about an hour after where I can relax. You know, and, and, yeah. and, and it's adrenaline. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> adrenaline is making your brain work, it's making the art you know, whatever's coming into your head seconds later is coming out of your mouth. But even that can mm. cause problems. So just to give you another quick story. <laughs> yeah. Please. Um uh, a few years ago I'm I'm on the set of a breakfast and uh that they've asked me about i've done this subject and then i hear my earpiece now you're 30 seconds behind they can't pull to a commercial you know <laughs> that everything's fine for six seconds so oh. so so, so that they they're saying in the commentary is they're not asking anything asking anything wow so so so, <laughs> so, 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 so I, I can see the look of terror on, on this commentator's face and so the first the first thing that came into her head was was that uh, uh, Prince Charles had said three months before that period that he didn't really want to become king. Uh, what do you think of that? And now, now they're doing 15, 14, 30, so, so, so now I've got, to the delay, say, yeah. I, I've got to say this in milliseconds. What I meant to say was I don't that Charles wanted to become king all my life. That, that's been his philosophy, you know, policy. What I said was I'd known Charles. You know, of course, <laughs> he wanted to become king. As soon as I said it, I thought, what have I just said? I, you know, I didn't mean to say it like that, but hey, what, <laughs> yeah, it's six fifteen in the morning. Nobody is listening at six fifteen in the morning. So, so I, I got a call uh, from Helena, my you know, Helena, so my uh, colleague, and she said, uh, "Look at social media." Oh, and I said, "What do you mean, look at social media?" She said, "Christian, you, I got another." Yeah. Uh, and and right across the world was this wolf. <laughs> I've known Charles all my life, and of course he wants to become king. And, oh I'm, thinking, and I'm thinking, I'm off to the tower. I, I, you know, I, was, I, was, I was waiting for the knock on the door, you know, you know, and I'm being escorted to the tower for the, for the rest of my existence. And I think, oh my God. So even when you know what you want to say, sometimes your brain doesn't engage with your mouth. And um, <laughs> And then it goes because it's alive. It's gone and roll all over. Absolutely. You uh, thought I'm safe. It's six fifteen. Nobody's watching. Nobody's so watching. Like, <laughs> and I, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, this, it's this, always someone watching, you know, right? This, 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 this was uh, this went out on ITN. ITN had shared it with CNN. CNN he were putting out right across the world. I mean, there was this whole. There was about twenty different. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! These things. Yeah. And even now with these these uh, broadcast that we're doing today is live because yeah. I also love live broadcast yeah. and I agree hundred percent with you. When it's finished, 
oh my god you're so peaceful yeah. it's like you go to a sauna right absolutely uh, because it's, it, it, it does produce adrenaline it, it, uh, it, 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 because it, it, you have to formulate the interview on the spot uh, and as, as you speak in this broadcast so, so it, it, it's creating the right image which is what you do Thank extremely you. well very professional good at doing the work so it, it's creating the character um, and it's creating the image mm -hmm. so you know where, where we are nowadays is uh, very very good at creating the right impression the right image the right answer to the problem so uh, it's great to be on shows like this thank you so much and with that for us it's a pleasure to have you here an honor yes and what we can call it my teacher yes. so uh, it's a great role model if me yes. you are a great role model for me uh, uh and uh, very inspiring thank and uh, and thank you so much for all the lessons and all the chat that we have done previous the interview me and i we have been learning a lot from you yeah. We're very proud to have you here. I'm proud to be here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Have a good one. And have for you, day, please rewind and listen carefully this interview. Probably one of the greatest person in this planet that very kindly have shared with you his secrets so you too one day can uh, create different shows and become a great journalist, a great broadcaster and bring this possibility.